Yo, 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 what's up? Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Happy holidays. It's Chris Sims unbuttoned and points bet. We're like the two best friends that anybody could have. We're the two best friends that anybody could have. And my man, Jay Cratcher, who is one of my best buddies now. What's up, man? How you doing? I want to pick your brain on some things today. You doing all right? Doing good, Chris. Yeah, looking forward to it. Let's Great. get into it. Great. All right, let's get into it. All right, first one. Been a hot topic of conversation here lately. And I'm interested to see kind of your logic behind this, you know, where points bet has set the line at. But offensive player of the year, you know, I think we got some legitimate candidates this year, some two, three, maybe four that really stand out, uh, Jay. And, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on who the leader is and maybe some guys that we're, we aren't paying attention to that you think could steal the award. Yeah, so right now, you know, we think this is Jonathan Taylor versus Cooper Cup. Uh, Brady was hanging around with the record numbers that he was putting up, but he really fell off a cliff against New Orleans. And Debo Samuel missing a game, and he slowed down a little bit. He's fallen off too. So we think this is Taylor versus Cup. Uh, this is probably the closest awards race there is at the moment. Uh, Taylor looked like he pulled away with that 67-yard run against New England, but then Cooper Cup has an incredible performance against Seattle. So we think these guys are really neck and neck, and also dark horses for MVP. But we make Taylor slight favorite just because his stats, he still has an edge on Cup. He's up by, I think, 234 yards and five touchdowns from scrimmage. And then also, Cup's context is just better, uh, where Cup has Matthew Stafford and Jonathan Taylor has Carson Wentz. Right. So Taylor, I think, is just carrying his team a little bit more. Cup has more help. Uh, he's got more superstars around him. I think Cup is probably the second or third best player on his team. Aaron Donald's better, you can make a case for Stafford, whereas Jonathan Taylor is the best player on the Colts. So that's why right now we have Taylor slightly in front of Cup. But, I mean, what do you think? Would you have Taylor over Cup? I would. I would go with you there, too. I think your logic makes sense. It's the logic I think of. Cooper Cup's awesome. There's no doubt. There's a support system around him that, you know, certainly benefits him. But I think the point you make is, like, Jonathan Taylor's the face of the franchise with the Colts right now. It's rare. It's usually a quarterback. We know that. But Carson Wentz is the quarterback. He's good. He's not great. Jonathan Taylor is great. And we know ever since they kind of dove into, like, hey, let's give Jonathan Taylor the ball more, the Colts have taken off as a football team. So I'm with you there. I would go Jonathan Taylor too, Jay. He would be the guy I would look at. Two guys that I'm a little surprised that I'd like to ask you about and I think I know your answer to one of them. You know, the first one, Devontae Adams, you know, he's having an unbelievable year too. I'm shocked he's not a little higher up that list. Is that strictly because the Aaron Rodgers factor? Does that hurt Devontae Adams? I think it's just Cup. Cup's yeah. numbers now are just getting to the point where he's just blocking off the, the rest of the wide receiver position. And that hurts Justin Jefferson as well. But and Devante missing a game, that hurts him. Right. The fact that Cup is leading the league in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns, and it's not particularly close in any of those categories. No, no. I think that, you know, a lot of people might still say Devontae Adams is the best wide receiver in football, but I think Cup is just having a better year this year. So uh, that's why Devontae is, is pretty long in the odds at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I totally get that. I do, you know, and yes, Cooper Cup is he's – He's found quite the niche within that offense. They know how to feed him the ball, just like Devontae Adams. You're right. But Cooper Cup's having the better year, and that could be it. Devontae's a better player. Cooper Cup's better this year. You know, Patrick Mahomes, yes, he's probably a better player, but this year Justin Herbert's been better. That's why he gets to be the starter in the AFC Pro Bowl. It makes total sense. One more guy I want to ask you with this award. I am. This is the one I'm most shocked about, and I still think there might be a chance here if he kind of goes off these last three weeks. Debo Samuel. You know, for what he's doing for their offense in San Francisco, I do look at him as being almost every bit as important to their offense as Cooper Cup and Jonathan Taylor. I know they have a Kittle there who's also important to him. But, you know, do you think if he went off, let's say rushing and receiving over the last three weeks, do you think he can like legitimately inject himself in this conversation? Definitely. And he is the long shot that I would look at over Jefferson, Adams, Brady. Debo is the guy because Debo can't be directly compared to Taylor because he's not a running back. And right. he can't be directly compared to Cup because he's not a receiver either. He's just both. And the fact that he's putting up, you know, huge touchdown numbers in both categories, when you look at them combined as a running back and receiver, and he's racking up scrimmage yards. And he's also a guy who is prone to explosive plays. And he does have 
160 yard games. And so, you know, he'll have chances against the Tennessee offense, uh, defense, against the Houston defense. Right. And then he'll have a huge game against the Rams in week 18, where he goes against Cup and might be able to show that, you know, with a performance better than Cups, might insert him into the conversation even more. So, Definitely see him as behind Cup and Taylor at the moment, but he has a lot of upside and, and could get into the conversation. Yeah, that, that, I'm with you. I think you phrased it right. If there was a long shot to, to maybe jump into this, that's the guy I would look at. Shanahan, very creative in finding ways to get him the ball, and he's got a very interesting skill set for sure. All right, another award I want to hit on, and I'm dying to get your thoughts and feel here You know, as far as you're, you're the old great oracle of points bet. <laughs> Comeback player of the year. I got some issues with this one, all right? So I do. And I had issues before. Again, this is points bet. You know, you're gauging the public and everything there. Dak Prescott, clearly the leader. What I want to say is why? Why is he clearly the leader over somebody that I think should be the leader in Nick Bosa? Well, you're speaking my language, Chris, because I think Nick Bosa should be the front runner for this award on merit. And, you know, his statistics are ridiculous coming off a torn ACL where he only played two games last year. I think he's third in the league in sacks, fourth in forced fumbles, first in tackles for loss. Right. And he's also the most double-teamed edge rusher in the league. And he's turned this San Francisco defense, which has no cornerbacks left, into one of the best defenses in football over the past month. Yeah. So Nick Bosa, I think, is clearly the deserving candidate. But the thing is, is that, there is just so much to, for him to fight through in terms of overcoming the quarterback position, which is so much more glamorous, which gets so much more attention. And people have just been desperate all year to give this award to Dak Prescott, even though he hasn't been good for two months. Uh, but the fact that Dak, you know, he has such a high profile, such a big name, he plays for America's team. And just, I think that people are going to remember the image of him holding his foot last yeah. year and see that he's carrying Dallas to, you know, right now a top two, three seed in the NFC. But I think that if people actually really think about the award and the cases and the merit, then I agree that, that Bosa is the guy. And if he has a big game in primetime against Tennessee, and then, you know, he has fun with Davis Mills next week, then he's every chance to, to really climb into pole position. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like everything you said there. I mean, I'm with you. Again, that public. I mean, get it now. Buy now. Buy now. Buy, buy, buy. Nick Bosa. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to continue to beat, you know, and pound on the table is to, to hopefully change the narrative a little bit because I think you said it right. Ever since we saw the image of Dak Prescott holding his ankle going the wrong way last year, everybody wanted to give him comeback player of the year this year from the get-go. And then the first game happened against the Buccaneers, and it's like they already started etching his name in on the, the trophy. And it's, yes, it's, it's I, I get tired of the quarterback stuff all the time. I love Dak Prescott. I love him. He's definitely one of the 10 best quarterbacks in football. I've been around him for a few times. He's great. But – Nick Bosa's in the conversation for NFL defensive MVP, best player in the league. You mentioned it. The stats show it. If you watch a game, it shows it. He's one of the best defensive players in football on the short list of guys there. So that's where I just go, man, it's crazy. And Bosa, I hope he does. Come on, we can't give every award to the quarterback all the damn time. Uh, so I'm, I like that. Anybody else you look at there to be – any bit of a threat to either one of those guys at the top there for comeback player of the year? Well, I think the question with Prescott is whether he's even the most deserving quarterback candidate, because there's a lot of arguments that can be made that Joe Burrow is having a better year than Prescott. Right. He's getting very unlucky with some interceptions, Joe Burrow. Right now he leads the league. I don't think he deserves to. Uh, he had what should have been a really long touchdown to Jamar Chase a couple of weeks ago. You know, bounce off of Chase for an interception. Right. He's having a lot of those kind of plays. Whereas I, th I think that he is arguably the more deserving candidate for quarterbacks than Prescott. And I think that, you know, if you like Bosa for this award, one thing that really helps Bosa is that Prescott and Burrow, I think they will cannibalize each other a little mm. bit. They'll eat into each other's vote. And then people might turn their minds to Bosa, who, like you said, is just having a better year than either of those guys relative to his position, right. where he is a top five candidate for defensive player of the year. Trent Williams said this week that, you know, if you wanted to create a pass rusher in a lab, Nick Bosa would walk out. He's just an incredible football player. He's playing much better than he did as well before the injury. And I think that's a big part of the comeback player of the year is that yeah. Bosa's come back better. Right. Uh, Dak hasn't. Dak is just 
you know, he's been playing worse the past two months than he was before the injury. So a lot happening in this award, but I think the Bosa is, is a real chance. Yeah, appreciate it, man. It was a good conversation, and yeah, I think we're both on to something there. You know, we like Bosa is what we're telling you. Jay, appreciate the insight as always. You the man. I'll talk to you. Happy holidays, all right, big guy? We'll talk next week. See ya. Pleasure, Chris. Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.